to Climate Action News one-on-one, -on -one, brought to you by We Don't Have Time, the world's largest social media platform for climate action, and a sustainable tomorrow, Sweden's leading network and conference organizer with, focus, with a focus on sustainable business. My name is Katarina Rolfstotter Jansson, and I am the host of this program. Jakob Trollbeck is the designer of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. He is founder of Trollbeck and Company in New York and the new division in Stockholm, a company dedicated to strategic communication focusing on sustainability. Great to see you, Jakob. Great to see you too. Uh, we are in, uh, in a pandemic situation. And uh, what would you say, uh, how is the pandemic affecting the work with the Sustainable Development Goals, primarily Goal 13, Climate Action? Well, um, there's so much to say about this, uh, and people are going to be talking about this for probably hundreds of years. Well, maybe the climate uh, crisis is going to come as a bigger threat to us. But uh, anyway, the way that the society and the world reacts to this, I think, is very interesting. And um, it is all about communication in the end, because that's how we can make people take all different kinds of actions. And I, and I think that it's also a lot about words. Um, I think it's interesting because you said just pandemic. Mm -hmm. And to me, pandemic, uh, I'm thinking about hundreds of people dead on the street and, and like, you know, something that happened in the 16th century or, or something. And um, that what, what we're facing now is definitely... Uh, a huge health risk, especially to uh, older people. Um, but uh, Corona is not uh, actually a threat to the society in the sense that, that there's a lot more people dying from cancer and from, from heart disease every day. Um, and not to mention the about 15,000 children under five years of age who die every day. So it's all about the perspective and the framing. Um, so in a sense, you could say that uh, we're, we're overreacting a little bit. But at the same time, I'm so fascinated by it that it shows that we actually can change the course of mm. economies and, and um, the situation in, in society in different ways. And, and then I think when, as it comes to the global goals, uh, it works two ways. The first is that a lot of the coronavirus uh, is very well covered in the global goals. And the other is how really? we... Yeah. Well, so we did the 17 goals, and that was five years ago. Uh, that Almost five years ago. September 2015 was the launch. Uh, we, of course, have been working uh, on the system for about a year before then. But most people know the 17 goals. Uh, but in a sense, you, the 17 goals are categories that, that, that keeps within them 169 targets that are sort of the real goals. And we have created um, sort of a, a color chart system for all of these, uh, all of these uh, goals and targets that look something like this. And here so you, you call it look. the target finder, correct? Exactly, just like a color finder. And uh, what we've done here is exactly the same thing as we did with the, with the 17 main goals. We have given them a, a, a shorter name that's easier to understand. And we have given them an icon that that puts uh, the target, the goal in the, co in the context. And if we look under the health goal, number three, we see directly that we have five communicable diseases mm. here. And um, that can be pretty obvious, but there's also a target that says improve early warning systems. And that's obviously something that we really have to work on. Mm -hmm. There are furthermore, uh, a target that is uh, support research development and access to affordable vaccines and medicines. And that's obviously what what's people are working on right now. And then if we're talking about health workers, we have a 
we have a goal, a target that is also supporting increasing health financing and support for health workers, especially in developing countries. So uh, it's, I find that with most things that happens in society today, you can find them covered within these targets. This is really spot on, the, the target, that targets that you, that you selected here and, and showed us. Um, what can we learn from how we communicate and how we, how we work with, with communications in, in, in the COVID uh, situation and pull that into uh, how we work with, with the, the climate, climate crisis? Well, I, th I think the one thing we should learn is that a lot of people have said that things are impossible. And uh, we have heard that it's impossible to, to uh, lower the carbon emissions because that, that means that the industries are going to stop and so we need to keep on polluting and burning fossil fuel. Uh, we've also heard that there are not enough money around to, to support uh, uh, health care in the world. We've heard that there's not enough money to clean up the oceans and, and the seas and rivers. And all of a sudden, it is possible to stop the wheels. And there is money, it turns out, to give to hospitals mm -hmm. and to people who get, get laid off. And we realize that there are actually, uh, uh, there are a lot of resources that we can use. And it's just a question of the will to do it. So this really shows, because regardless of how you look at the corona uh, virus crisis and uh, regard, regardless of how worried you are and how close it's going to hit you, because uh, I know that probably many people who look at this uh, right now have, have uh, been, been hurt by it in some way. Maybe a loved one have, have disappeared uh, or, or maybe struggling mightily. But we know for sure that when we're talking about the effects of, of climate change, the, the coronavirus crisis is really a little blip because we're, stand, we, we're up against something that can dramatically threaten all of the... the societal economic system uh, and and change the whole pictures in the whole world and um, I don't know if you've seen but but there is a very uh, uh, good illustration with someone you know with the flatten the curve and then yes, you I've seen it. Mm -hmm. then you look uh, later on comes the big curve and that that is the climate crisis mm -hmm. uh, so we've seen now that we can change things I'm not saying that we've changed it now to another more stable and workable situation because there's nothing that's sustainable about the, sustain the situation right now. But I think that as things start to start up, uh, we will see a lot of changes automatically. I think uh, people will fly less, for example, uh, I think people are going to fly less first because they're worried about getting on a plane uh, because regardless of the fact that there will sooner or later be a vaccine, the, this virus is still going to be around and it's still going to, going to be uh, hurtful for some people, just the way that all viruses are. So I think that one thing is that people are going to be more concerned on getting on a plane for health reasons. And then I think, there's a huge uh, um, uh, uh, stress on all of the financial systems right now. And I think that companies are not going to just willy-nilly send, send, send people to one-hour conferences or one-hour meeting or, or a half-day conference in another city or in another continent because we are spending enough time in this corona zone now so people will have to start to use the digital tools to communicate for example and that's not going to go away once we start to to uh, go back to normal in in terms of being able to show up to work mm -hmm. Jakob, we see examples of of uh, what i call climate leadership 
happening now in, in the wake of the or in the midst of the, the pandemic. There was just just used in news out the other day about um, Amsterdam uh, committing to using the donut economy uh, principles uh, when they restart their economy after after the pandemic. Um, do you can you give us any other examples or just words about what you see uh, as climate leadership uh, right now? Well, I think that the it's it's going to be very clear that which which societies are the most resilient societies, and uh, and it's going to it's going to prove to everyone that the countries that have the the best built out healthcare, for example, are going to do a lot better, mm. and we're going to realize that it's not sustainable to build a world that is only has one goal and that is financial gain. And, and should I say exponential financial gain because all the markets apparently had to go up and up and up all the time. And we also learned that the evaluation that those markets have are also something that is sort of made up. And the, I, I think the realization about the system, how the system works means that a lot more people are going to reprioritize where, what they want to invest in. And I really hope that we can take this opportunity to start up our industries in a more sustainable way and to take into consideration how we're working with, with the distribution of means in the societies. Because it's, it's to have the kind of world that we have today with such enormous injustices, inequalities, and such a rampant abuse of the natural resources and biodiversity, is gonna, we're, we're gonna see that it's not gonna help anybody. And unless we take this opportunity to really rethink of how we start up societies again, we have really missed, I think, a chance of a lifetime to do something different. Thank you very much, Jakob Trollbeck, for your profound wisdom in this case. It's been wonderful to listen to you as always. And uh, I'd like to thank the viewers for joining us on Climate Action One on One. And uh, please join the We Don't Have Time platform network and contribute to Climate Action. And if you are based in Scandinavia, you can also join A Sustainable Tomorrow on the website at sustainabletomorrow.com. And I'll see you again next week for another interview. Bye-bye. Coming up next week, Minda Lubber is CEO and President of Cirrus, a sustainability nonprofit organization working to build leadership and drive solutions throughout the economy.